Hello everyone, today I'm going to read the first chapter of Horrid Henry Meets the Queen. It's called Horrid Henry's Chores. I hope you enjoy it. The weekend, the lovely, lovely weekend. Sleeping in, breakfast in his pyjamas, morning TV, afternoon TV, evening TV. No school and no Miss Battleaxe for two whole days. In fact, there was only one bad thing about the weekend. Henry didn't even want to think about it. Maybe Mum would forget, he thought hopefully. Maybe today would be the day she didn't burst in and ruin everything. Horrid Henry settled down in the comfy black chair and switched on his new favourite TV show, Hog House, where teenagers competed to see whose room was the most disgusting. Henry couldn't wait till he was a terrible teen too. His bedroom would surely beat anything ever seen on Hog House. Ugh, squealed Horrid Henry happily, as filthy Phil showed off what he kept under his bed. Yuck, shrieked Horrid Henry, as Mouldy Myra yanked open her cupboard. Oh, gross, howled Horrid Henry, as Tornado Tarek showed why his family had moved out. And this week's winner for the most revolting room is... Clunk, clunk, clunk. Mum clanked him. She was dragging her favourite instruments of torture, a hoover and a duster. Peter followed. Henry, turn off that horrid programme this minute, said Mum. It's time to do your chores. No, screamed horrid Henry. Was there a more hateful, horrible word in the world than chores? Chores was worse than homework, worse than vegetables, even worse than injection, share and bedtime. When he was king, no child would ever have to do chores. Any parent who so much as whispered the word chores would get catapulted over the battlements into the piranha-infested moat. We can start by picking up your dirty socks from the floor, said Mum. Pick up a sock? Pick up a sock? Was there no end to Mum's meanness? Who cared if he had a few old socks scattered around the place? I can't believe you're making me do this, glared Henry. He glared at Mum, then he glared at his crumpled socks. The socks were miles away from the sofa. He'd pick them up later, much later. Henry, your turn to hoover the sitting room, said Mum. Peter, your turn to dust. No, howled horrid Henry. I'm allergic to hoovers. Mum ignored him. Then empty the bins and put the dirty clothes into the washing machine and make sure you separate the whites from the colours. Henry didn't move. It'll only take 15 minutes, said Mum. Oh, it's not fair, said Henry. I hoovered last week. No, you didn't. I did, said Peter. I did, screamed Henry. Liar, liar. Oh, can't I do it later, said horrid Henry. Later had such a happy way of turning into never. N-O spells no, said Mum. Peter started dusting the TV. Stop it, said Henry, I'm watching that. I'm dusting, said Peter. Oh, out of my way, worm, horrid Henry hissed. Mum marched over and switched off the TV. No TV until you do your chores. Everyone has to pitch in and help in this family. Horrid Henry was outraged. Why should he help around the house? That was his lazy parents' job. Didn't he work hard enough already, heaving his heavy bones to school every day? And all the schoolwork he did. It was amazing, thought Henry, as he lay kicking and screaming on the sofa, that he was still alive. I won't. I'm not your slave. Henry, it's not fair if Mum and Dad do all the housework, said Perfect Peter. It seemed fair to Henry. Quite right, Peter, said Mum, beaming. What a lovely, thoughtful boy you are. Shut up, Peter, screamed Henry. Don't be horrid, Henry, screamed Mum. No TV and no pocket money until you do your chores, said Dad, running in. Henry stopped screaming. No pocket money? No TV? I don't need pocket money anyway, shrieked Henry. Fine, said Mum. Wait, what was he saying? Of course he needed pocket money. How else would he buy sweets? And he'd die if he couldn't watch TV. I'm calling the police said Horrid Henry. They'll come and they'll arrest you for child cruelty. Finished, sang out Perfect Peter. I've done all my chores. He added, could I have my pocket money, Mum, please? Of course you can, said Mum, handing over a shiny 50 pence piece. Horrid Henry glared at Peter. Could that ugly toad get any uglier? All right, snarled Henry. I'll hoover. And get out of my way, frog face, or I'll hoover you up. Mum, wailed Peter. Hi, Henry's trying to hoover me. Oh, just do your chores, Henry, said Mum. She felt tired. 
You could have done all your chores in the time you spent arguing, said Dad. He felt tired too. Henry slammed the sitting room door behind his horrible mean parents. He looked at the hoover with loathing. Why didn't that stupid machine just hoover by itself? A robot hoover, that's what he needed. Henry switched it on. Vroom, vroom. Hoover, hoover, ordered Henry. The hoover didn't move. Oh, go on, hoover, you can do it, said Henry. Vroom, vroom. Still the hoover didn't move. What a lot of noise that stupid machine makes, thought Henry. I bet you can hear it all over the house. And then suddenly, horrid Henry had a brilliant, spectacular idea. Why had he never thought of it before? He'd asked to hoover every week. Henry dragged the hoover over to the sitting room door and left it roaring there. Then he flopped on the sofa and switched on the TV. Great, Hog House hadn't finished. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Mum and Dad listened to the hoover blaring from the sitting room. Goodness, Henry was working hard. They were amazed. Isn't Henry doing a good job, said Mum. He's been working over 30 minutes non-stop, said Dad. Finally, he's being responsible, said Mum. At last, said Dad. Go, Tarek, cheered Henry, as Tornado Tarek blew into his parents' tidy bedroom. Ha, 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 chortled Henry. What a shock those parents would get. Stay tuned for the filthy final between Tarek and Myra, coming up in three minutes, said the presenter. Dirty Dirk. Footsteps. Yikes, someone was coming. Oh, no. Henry sprang from the sofa, turned off the telly and grabbed the hoover. Mum walked in. Horrid Henry began to pant. Oh, I've worked so hard, Mum, gasped Henry. Please, can I stop now? Mum stared at the dust balls covering the carpet. But Henry, said Mum, there's still dust everywhere. Oh, I can't help it, said Henry. I did my best. All right, Henry, said Mum, sighing. Yes, thought horrid Henry. But remember, no TV until you've emptied the bins and separated the laundry. I know, I know, muttered Henry, running up the stairs. If he finished his chores in the next two minutes, he'd be in time for the hog house final. Right, Mum said to empty the bins. She didn't say into what, just that the bins had to be emptied. It was the work of a few moments to tip all the waste paper baskets onto the floor. That's done, thought horrid Henry, down the stairs. Now, that stupid laundry. When he was a billionaire computer game tester, he'd never wash his clothes. He'd just buy new ones. Horrid Henry glared at the dirty clothes piled on the floor in front of the washing machine. Oh God, it'd take him hours to separate the whites from the colours. What a waste of valuable time, he thought. Mum and Dad just made him do it to be mean. What difference could it make to wash a red sweatshirt with a white sheet? None. Horrid Henry shoved all his clothes into the washing machine and slammed the door. Free at last. Done, shrieked Horrid Henry. Wow, what a brilliant hog house that was, thought Horrid Henry, jingling his pocket money. He wandered past the washing machine. Strange, he didn't remember all those pink clothes swirling around. Since when did his family have pink sheets and pink towels? Since he'd washed a red sweatshirt with the whites. Uh-oh. Mum would be furious. Dad would be furious. His punishment would be terrible. Hide, thought Horrid Henry. Dad stared at his newly pink underpants, shirts and vests. Mum stared at her best white skirt, now her worst pink one. Henry stared at the floor. This time, there was no escape. Maybe we're asking too much of you, said Dad, gazing at the trail of rubbish lying around the house. You're just not responsible enough, said Mum. Too clumsy, said Dad. Too young, said Mum. Maybe it's easier if we do the chores ourselves, said Dad. Maybe it is, said Mum. Horrid Henry could hardly believe his ears. No more chores, because he was so bad at doing them. Yippee, squealed Henry. On the other hand, maybe not, said Dad, glaring. We'll see how well you do your chores next week. OK, said Horrid Henry agreeably. He had the feeling his chore-doing skills wouldn't be improving. And that's finished. So I hope you enjoyed chapter one. Join me again for chapter two which is Moody Margaret casts a spell. Bye.